Lord, we thank you for the Bible. At this Bible Sunday, we are so grateful for your word that has come so close to us. We can learn, we can read, and we can lead our lives like it. Speak to us even today and may the meditation of my mind and the word of my mouth have favor before you. Use me as your vessel, as you minister to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Mm. Kindly be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. In case there's visitor, I'm Reverend John, the curate. And I'm glad that uh, at this very special uh, feast day where we celebrate and thank God for the Bible, I'm sharing on a topic, God is still, still speaking to us today through his words, uh, his word, the Bible. Long time ago, he used to speak through the prophets, even angels, and so on. But today, God still speaks to us through his word. The history of National Bible Sunday can be traced to the publication of the Anglican Book of Common Prayer in 1549. The book in its entirety contained study verses and prayers for each Sunday and the idea was conceived towards making people more committed to the Bible study and fellowship with God. And that's why God still is still speaking to us through the Bible. Um, I asked the other people in the other service if they have different verses, I mean versions of the Bible. I don't want to ask you because I'm sure not most of you have Bible. But in case you have, can you lift it? In case, just in case. Oh, very good. Yeah, this is a good number. Almost 40%. That is enough for today, digital life, digital world. Thank you very much. Continue carrying your Bible because that is the true uh, version of the... They used to read scrolls. So if you carry your Bible, I'll know you are a real Anglican. You who are carrying Bibles are real Anglicans because at Catechism, you are told to carry three books. Do you remember? Yes. Except those who are not Anglican, sorry. But those who are typical Anglican, they still carry their Bibles, they still carry their prayer books. There are so many versions. I don't know which you have, but the phone Bible, phone Bible may not be reliable. We have around 104 versions of the Bible today. If you consider only English language versions, there are more than 60 versions. So those other ones include the vernacular Bibles, which can be classified into word for word, meaning to meaning, and paraphrased Bible. We also have youth Bible. We also have, who has women, women Bible? There is also women Bible, which also men can read. Praise the Lord. So we also ask uh, uh, some questions as we uh, thank God for the Bible. Who compiled the Bible? Do you know who compiled the Bible? The Bible was written and compiled by many people, whom many scholars say are mostly unknown from a variety of desperate cultures and backgrounds. The Bible's origin is both human and divine. 
It was not uh, like God wrote it and gave it to someone. It was not like that. Instead, as the children have said, it is people who are inspired by God. They were given power to write what God wanted them to write. Using their culture, using their own styles, their history, their testimonies, and so on. Not just, it was not just from God and not just from human. God doesn't work in vacuum. And that's why he also uses people to write the Bible. Otherwise, people would be running away from the Bible if God himself wrote it. So the Bible's narratives, poems, histories, letters, prophecies, and other writings came from a profound collaboration between humanity and God. Inspired men of God wrote a, a total of 66 books. You've heard the children saying, if I asked you, would you answer how many books are there in the in Pauline letters? How many letters are written by Paul? Who can answer that? And so we need also to study and know because we are all stu students of the Bible, isn't it? Otherwise, you'll be challenged uh, by other people who know their books. 66 books of what we have come today to know as Bible. Of course, anyone who believes in God knows that the Bible is authored by God through the human help of those who had a close relationship with God and were willing to open or rather to pen their encounters, stories, and reflections on life according to whatever they were led by God to record. Just like there are people who have a notebook, but they note um, some memories. Just like some people use now WhatsApp or Facebook to put status. So a long time ago, there were no Facebook. They used to write those moments. Say, today I've eaten a cake, they write. Today I'm blessed with someone has come, they write. Those inspiration. This is especially true in terms of creation, foretold prophecy, and ceremonial laws. In that way, the book is living source of relationships, theirs and God's, and how they link to us today. But again, there was time God was not speaking. He was silent for 400 years. Can you imagine someone you are conversing and all of a sudden is silent? You will ask yourself questions. For 400 years, God was silent. Was he really silent or people were busy not listening to him? Or he had spoken, but they were not following what he was speaking. So he was waiting for them to start doing what he was saying. But the records are saying from Malachi to the New Testament, it is a span of a period of 400 years, four centuries. No prophets, no angels, no writing, no nothing. God is silent. People, I think, they were not silent. They were murmuring, as usual. It is known by some members of the Protestant community as the 400 silent years because it was a span where no new prophets were raised and God revealed nothing to the Jewish people for 400 years. There are people who are obsessed to new things. There are people who are obsessed to new news. They want to know what is happening. Mushene. If they, are not, they have not heard about anything or about someone, they will go and ask. So, uh, uh, this time, nothing was going on 
and uh, God was silent. He spoke in the book of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, and then it was quiet, quiet for 400 years. People would say, remember that day, that time when God spoke generation after generation. They heard that God was speaking. They heard that angels were coming. Just like today, people want prophets. If you want a prophet, you'll get them. If you want miracles, you'll get them. If you want to be told about your future, there are people who can tell you. They can even tell you the color of your bed sheet. <laughs> and people are happy about it. What is that to do with the eternal life? They can tell you you are firstborn, you are secondborn, and all those information. Mm -hmm. So people want to be told. But the Bible is speaking. The Bible is talking to us, is communicating just as God is intending. Is it is as new as it was those more than two thousand years ago. Has God changed? The people think that God of the Old Testament is different from the God of New Testament. Some think God of the Old Testament is very harsh, but this of New Testament is full of grace. That's why we are not dying like San Ananian and Sapphira when we don't pay tithe. That's why we are not stoned to death. There is grace, or this God has changed. God cannot change. So rather than seeing that God of the Old Testament versus the New Testament as separate, the truth is that God has not changed. I want to, to write this or to mark this and go and read that from Malachi 3, 6, James 1, 17. God cannot change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible is different from the other books of our other religion. For example, it is different from Itihasa and Vedas of the Hindu. It is different from the Guru Granth Sahit of the Sikhism. It is different from Tripatakas of the Buddhists and many other hard names of books. The Quran, the holy book of Islam, was revealed to one Muhammad over a period of 23 years. But the, Bibles, the Bible was written by 40 authors of different calibers, different locations, different cultures, different backgrounds, over a period of 1,500 years, from different continents and different language, by men who did not know each other. But the story is flowing, the story of love, the salvific history, you can follow it. Different author came from all walks of life so that some other people will not say this one was written by those this one was written by this type of people it doesn't uh, fit us no everyone is included because god was speaking in styles you take what fits you and god still speaks the same word speaking to different people in different ways. We can learn from understanding more about the Bible writers that it doesn't matter where we are coming from or what we, are, we do for a living. Any of us can be used by God at any time. Surely the men who wrote all that they did had no idea how much of an impact their words would have through the centuries. They didn't know. But today, we are reading, we are inspired, we are saved. 
because God used them. The Bible remains the most widely talked about book, sought after, and disputed book to ever be distributed. The fact that other religions have similar stories in their theologies is reason enough to believe this ancient book of truth and secrets as valid. Standing the test of time from many archaeological finds in the past two centuries alone. So the Bible was also written by people not doing it as a trade. They were not author, uh, authors. They didn't do it for a living. They were just writing, inspired by God himself. Curiously enough, none of them who wrote books of the Bible wrote for a living. They didn't write it as freelancers or authors. In fact, they all held other occupations which make the act of their writing so concisely that much more divinely inspired. You don't need to defend the Bible. It can defend itself. It can heal. You can read it and God can talk to you. I once did that and I found God was speaking to me personally. It doesn't mean that none of them were artistically bent. Think about someone like Moses. He was a learned person whose writing reflected in years of experience in leadership role. Or King David, who expressed his praise through verse, song, and even dance. David was a dancer. Uh, is he dancing a sin? If David dance, he danced well anyway. I told you I'm a dancer. Uh, how many of us are dancers? Oh yes, God can use you. He can use you also in that. Praise the Lord. So God can use even, do you remember a donkey was speaking? A donkey spoke the message from God. So if God can use a donkey, why not you? Amen? So God speaks today in a very different way, apart from the way he used. He can even use a madman. He can use a drunken person. Yes, eh? There was one who was... Uh, at um, Manamba, at the stage. So that day he was, he, 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 he had dr dr drunken liquor, so he was drunken. So he started preaching. He's not saved, but he was acting uh, a pastor. So he preached at the stage. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. And he was quoting the Bible. And then he called for altar call. Then a woman was touched. So she went for to receive Christ. And she received Christ. And that drunken man is not saved. He prayed and he led that woman to salvation. Because he used the Bible. And that woman believed. Then after a week, that woman was passing. So he saw the pastor went to him. Hello. Habari yako mchungaji? Bado naendelea vizuri tangu niokoke paka sasa naendelea vizuri. The other makangas told her, "Wachana na huyo huyo ni mlevi. Alikuwa na ni ulevi tu." Kama umeshaokoka waishikiana na uokovu wako. Yesu amekuokoa. That's how you cannot joke with the word of God. God can use it anyhow. If you want it it will help you. If you don't want it to help you, you just leave it. Just like that song. It's not good to sing here, but it's good to know. 
that song of wape wape vijonge vyao wakimeza wakitema ni shauri yao so the word of god is like that no one can force a donkey to drink water so long as you have come you have listened to it receive it it will help you that's why jesus used to tell them your faith has healed you verse 21 jesus was saying uh, this phrase from then on but in my version i don't know your version what it is saying the other version was saying from then on but this one international is saying from that time on jesus began to explain to his disciple that he must go to jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed on and on the third day be raised from the dead this phrase marks the turning point if you read for matthew 4 17 it is signal jesus announcement of the kingdom of heaven here it points to his new emphasis on his death and resurrection the, 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 at, and in 417 is telling them about the kingdom to refrain from sin and come to, to Jesus or to inherit the kingdom but here it, this is a turning point a time has come for him uh, the purpose of God to be fulfilled in his life the disciples still didn't gra grasp Jesus' true purpose because of their preconceived notions about what the Messiah should be. They thought this Messiah is coming to fight for us against the barbaric Roman leadership. He will fight a physical fight, but Jesus' Messianic was different. So in verse 22, Peter, who is Jesus' friend and devoted follower, who has just eloquently proclaimed Jesus' true identity, sought to protect him from the suffering he prophesied. Remember last time, it is Peter who said, you are the son of the Most High God, the true identity. And Jesus told him, you are the rock on whom I will build my church. That is uh, uh, an eloquent uh, revelation about Jesus' messianic state. And in verse 23, in his wilderness temptation, Jesus had messages that he could achieve greatness without dying when he was tempted by the devil. Chapter 4, verse 9. Matthew 4, verse 9. Here he had the same message from Peter. Satan is telling him, just bow down, uh, worship me, and I am able to give you everything without sweat. I can give you everything. Now here someone is telling him, you will not die. He came to die. He came to fulfill the, the mission of salvation. And now someone is telling him, uh, you are not going to die. Yeah? Jesus said, go behind me, Satan. Jesus was rebuking the attitude that was in him. Verse 24, when Jesus used the picture, now to read this one, then Jesus said to his disciple, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Christianity is not easy, as some people say, whereby you can just lift your phone like this and receive money. Just go and work. Don't be deceived. The word of God is very clear. You work and get your living. Praise the Lord. And that's why I said the other time, we can come to your place and work and pray. We don't just sit here and wait for your hope offering. We are here to walk with you this journey of faith 
which has so many challenges. I told the other day that Jesus went to the lake of Tiberia and found them spent the whole night without fish. Then he prayed for them. He helped them out and they were able to be successful. So if you, you, you sit down and wait for miracle money, there is miracle money. There is miracle babies. There is miracle of everything. It's not bad. It's true that Jesus can perform miracle even today. But follow the word of God. You better be in this perspective, godly, divine perspective of God. Think what God thinks. And we can only think what God thinks if we study the word of God. We have three Bible, Bible classes here in our church, for the whole church, but few people attend. Uh, Bible, my Bible students, are you here? Raise up your hands, very good. Uh, don't raise your hand if you, are, you have never come, yes, very good. Very effective, they really come. The others are in the, here, you don't have here? Ah, yeah, they are outside there, yes, there's another, but nowadays you don't come. So, study the word of God, and you'll see uh, God speaking to you. You'll start thinking the way God thinks, godly way, in a godly perspective. You'll accept God's will in your life. What is that God's will? And we see people don't call us to pray for their sick. And I said the other time, we just hear, we had a member, he was in the hospital, now he's discharged. We even try to call them. Can we come and pray with you? No, 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 don't come. Don't come. I, but we are pastors. <laughs> why don't I, why shouldn't I come to thank God that we've come? So we think about it and say, there's that prayer. Normally people pray when someone is very sick. And they say, God, if it is, you are, may your will be done. May your will be done. So for the sick, they, they even open their eyes. <laughs> will? Which will? <laughs> huh? Even if it is the will of God, they don't want. They just say, like Peter, it will not happen. The devil is a liar. You will not die. It's okay to pray like that. We are human. We only pull on our side. We want the best. Uh, we don't, there are things you cannot mention. But it will reach a point where you will ask God for his will to be done. His will is always good. Is, there is perfect will of God and permissive will of God. Especially when you, you force things. So my God, this one will not happen. It will not happen. He will live. He will not die. That is scripture. But if you sit down and listen careful, you will just keep quiet. And take, tell God, thank you. God, thank you for his life. If it is your will, let him live. What if he, he stays there for years without healing? And you spend all your fortune. Will that be the will of God? Which one do you want? Sometimes we pray for them to release them. If it is the will of God. I have once done that. But I was scared. <laughs> we pray, God, because he has stayed there. People have suffered. They don't even come to church anymore. They have spent everything they have because maybe the will of God is to take his life. Ezekiel was dying, and Isaiah was sent, go and tell Ezekiah to, pre to set right his home because that sickness, he's going to die. God knows when our... Time has ended here on earth. It's not only for that, but there are so many other things. We force God to give us permissive will. Permissive will is not very interesting. The perfect will of God is the best. Even if you are sick and you are within the perfect will of God, you will have peace. Praise the, the Lord. We are not praying for bad things, but what I'm saying here is that Allow God's will to be done 
Sometimes you are sick so that God can be glorified, just like Lazarus. He said, no, he's just sleeping. His sickness is to bring, bring glory. Sometimes you are down, and it is the will of God so that someone else can be lifted. Sometimes you are down, uh, you face some difficulties so that God can shape some characters in you to use you best. Sometimes you are down to, to give God, uh, God glory in your life, in your story. Those who wrote the Bible, not all of them were very comfortable. Some of them suffered. And here Jesus is saying, I'm going. I'm going to Jerusalem and I will suffer many things. What if it was you? Uh, you'll be going to Nairobi, but you'll suffer. You'll not go. <laughs> you say, mm -mm, why should I go there to suffer? Even if God has revealed to you, you'll suffer, but again, I'll come again and uh, restore. Our God is a God of restoration. Just like he restored Job. Job, Job was given double portion after that restoration. If we uh, give ourselves to God and listen to him, we'll just be grateful for everything. When you are sick, you'll thank God. When you lack something, you'll just thank God. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. God says, rejoice in the Lord always. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, in prayer, supplication, together with thanksgiving. Just thank God. Tell him, thank you, God, for this one, for my wife, for my children. And God will shine his face over your life. Following Jesus, therefore, meant a true commitment, the risk of death, and no turning back. As long as you've said, I'm a Christian, you'll sing that song. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Follow Jesus. Verse 25. That time, it was very clear. The possibility of losing their lives was very real for the disciples as well as for Jesus. So uh, they were worried. But these people were were warriors. They were fighters. They were not just uh, very soft, soft people. They were fishermen. They were carrying swords. Do you remember that time? They wanted to defend Jesus when the soldiers had, came, had, had come to, to, to capture Jesus. I think it's Simon. He said, can we use our swords? Already he had cut the, the ear of that uh, uh, son Andrew, uh, attendant. So Jesus had not yet said, fight. What if he had said, fight? They would fight for him. But uh, Jesus' kingdom was a different kingdom. I don't know how you understand Jesus, how you understand God. How can you understand someone if you don't stay with that person. We don't need to be only Sunday Christians. We need to, to work harder, uh, work upon your salvation. And that's why we've said we'll have Bible study and cells. And we've said, make sure you belong to one cell group. Praise the Lord. Just like today's cell number 1003, they are leading the service. Belong to one cell group so that we build ourselves in this faith because Jesus is coming back very soon, sooner than it was before. Jesus Christ has been authority, has authority to judge all the earth. Romans 14, 9 to 11, Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Although his judgment is already working in our lives, there is a future, final judgment when Christ returns and will be judged according to the word of God. If you've heard the message that you come to God, 
if God has spoken to you through his word, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, and everyone's life will be reviewed and evaluated. If you say, ah, I did not hear about this message, your life will be reviewed and evaluated. If you say, there are people who are liars, they lie to everyone. They think they'll lie even to the angels. They'll say, I have not heard the, the message of the word of God. This picture will come like a, a video, you listening and not doing what God is saying. This will not be confined to unbelievers. Sometimes we think it is the unbelievers who will be judged. But Christians, too, will face the judgment. Their eternal destiny is secured. They, already, uh, they are already children of God. But Jesus will look at how they handled gifts. God has blessed you with some gifts. How they handled opportunities. Sometimes you have a great opportunity to preach to people, to preach to your employees, to preach to your children, but you, you waste that opportunity. You have authority. You can even tell them, every night you must pray. But you yourself, you don't even pray. Everyone in the family goes to sleep without prayer. They wake up, ah, and everyone goes to his uh, businesses without praying. As a Christian, uh, you'll be examined for those opportunities. If you are married, that's an opportunity. Preach to your husband. Preach to your wife. Uh, preach to them. Make sure they are saved and they are going to heaven. Live with them. God has given you that person so that you may help them to go to heaven. It's not a coincidence. God gave you that person. Kwa nini mtoto wako? Mtunze vizuri, muambie neno la Mungu. Make sure he'll also go to heaven. Life is so short. And we start enjoying heavenly blessing here on earth. The joy of salvation, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. How can you buy peace? We have the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. How can you buy joy? We only get all those from Jesus. He, he will examine and evaluate the responsibility in order to determine their heavenly reward. So some of us will enter heaven, but you will see people receiving rewards. But you yourself will not get anything. At the judgment, God will deliver the righteous and condemn the wicked. So you choose you now. Where are you going to belong? Because all the disciples died. That's verse 28. Christ, before Christ returned, many believed that Jesus' words were fulfilled at the transfiguration when Peter, James, and John saw the glory. Others say, this statement refers to the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. Still others believe that Pentecost and the beginning of Christ's church fulfilled Jesus' word, words of uh, this glory. Like us today, the disciples didn't grasp Jesus' true purpose because of their preoccupied notion, as I've said, about what the Messiah should be. Do we know Jesus? Have you met Jesus in your life? Have you accepted? How many times have you listened to the word of God? Has it turned to be a bother? Even youth do not need to learn the word of God. They, they, are, they feel detested to the word of God. We began their Bible study. But they came the first two days and they stopped coming because it is Bible study. But tell them to come and put a disc joker and dance. 
they will come. And so I'm worried, and we ask the parents to help us. Teach them what we are teaching them. Tell them the word of God is, is relevant. It has eternal relevance. It will stand even in the time of judgment. We will be judged according to the word of God. So it's good to, to study the word of God. Not to study for argument. Because Jesus did not send us to win arguments. But he sent us to win souls. Sometimes as Christians we fight for God. Sema, lazima ni mtete mungu. Tete mungu. There's that song. Mara umtete bwana yesu. Sima maimara umtete. Nani wakutete wa sasa? Suwe ndo mnyonge. Wamtete ya yesu. Some people fight for the word of God. The word of God can fight for itself. It is pure. It has proven. It has uh, overcome the test of time. And it is relevant. It is new every morning. If Jesus had not died, Peter would have died in his sin. Sasa lazima Yesu alikuwa kufe. Ya nasema ah Yesu hezi kufa. Kwani unanionaje? Mimi siwezi kukutetea kweli Yesu. Eh? Tutapigana. He, he, he put him aside so that the other disciple could not hear the conversation. Sema Yesu nasemaje bwana? Mimi na hii timu yangu sisi ni majeshi wa kutosha. Eh? Wacha nikawapange to fight hii vita. Watakupigaje watu kule Yerusalemu? Eh? Tutakatakata. Akakemea sema pepo mchafu shindwa. Hmm? Go behind me Satan. Eh? Because this was a great temptation. Great temptation can come from those who love us and seek to protect us. Be cautious about advice from friends who say, surely God doesn't want you to face this. Sometimes you are facing your own line of life. So be it. They will not help you. Rather, they will confuse you. Make your own decision. Seek the face of God. Seek the will of God. Ask God, is this your will? Is this your will that I do this business? Is this your will that I live here? Is this your will that I fellowship here? Is this your will that I do this ministry? Ask God's will. Hata kama watu wanasema, hey, tunaona wewe ndo wewe. Seek the, the, the will of God in your life. Otherwise, you may be confused by your loved ones who want to protect you, especially if they are not saved. Don't listen to someone who is not saved. Don't listen advices to someone who doesn't know God. Listen advices from people who know God. People who can tell you the truth. There are people who love you so much until they cannot tell you the truth. Hata kama una uchafu, wana kuwacha, tu wana kupenda, wataki kukuudhi. The way to heaven is not like that. Just like when we preach. I don't need to please you. If I preach the word of God to you, ni kama ulewi, wimbo, wapewa. You love me, but God will have spoken to you. Anytime God speaks to people, he, he may speak in different ways. Sometimes he rebukes people. But that is his will. He wants you to change your life and live for him. Some people are double standard Christians. You may not know. Are they true Christians? They are not committed. Sometimes they are committed. Kama kifafa. Mwezi huu anabidi sana. Tam he in Kama Zile Hotel at in a peak, a lafu, so in high peak. Can we hotel? Be committed throughout hmm? to Jesus Christ. Hmm? Oftentimes, our most difficult temptation come from those who are only trying to protect us from discomfort. We need to be vigilant and seek God's direction and guidance always rather than always saying. In Jesus' name, Satan is a liar. 
If you say he's a liar and he's not, hata ya atashanga. Atasema sasa huu huu uongo wa minana memfunza. Mimi ni muongo lakini huu uongo wake umezidi. Hmm? Uh, Satan is a liar and the father of lies. So hata ukimsingizia yeye Yeah, atasema huyu Mkristo wa aina gani hakai akatulia uh, he's not very uh, uh, careful to listen to God to listen to what God is saying sometimes we just need the grace of God and I'm preparing you it may not be today but tomorrow you may be forced with uh, faced with difficulties utaita manabi utaenda sasa kwa Ezekiel Utafikiri sasa huu Mungu wako wa hapa ati afanye kazi. Sasa niende kwa Ezekiel. Dozan who went there and then he came back. So pastor, I've gone to Ezekiel but things are worsening. Then I prayed for her and she got healed. So it is faith that healeth. Jesus used to tell them your faith has made you all. Praise the Lord. Satan is always trying to get us to leave God out of the picture. You don't even remember that God is here, he can save. Jesus rebuked uh, the attitude that was in, in Peter. Real disciples discipleship implies real commitment, pledging to our whole existence to his service. We if we try to save our physical life from death, pain and comfort we may risk losing our life when we don't know Christ we make choices as though there were no afterlife we do things as if there's no tomorrow eternity yeah? but here as we live i was told this is first half in football for those who watch football but the second half death is like the half term waiting to the second half which most of the time may be longer like in this case if there's uh, gonna be penalties it may be so long isn't it so let's be rest assured that we have eternity let's make good choices even if you don't want to go to heaven for the sake of your children make right decisions praise the lord what the what we accumulate on earth has no value in gaining eternal life we may accumulate and get everything jesus asked them what will benefit you if you get everything here and lose your life the highest social and civic honor cannot earn as an entrance to heaven even if you are learned and rich where that will not earn you eternal life that's why even i need to give my life to jesus christ need to evaluate and uh, seek the face of god so that while i preach i also go to heaven evaluate your lifestyle from an eternal perspective where you live is this a, a, a mindset of god in me and you will find your value and decisions changing just like in school there are those who are very happy when they get 60% they are happy very happy they are jumping here and there 60 but another person because he has a different perspective he gets 60 and is not happy at all he's crying why because he has a different perspective the bible says do not be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind can we have a godly perspective yes today god still speaks to people god can speak and i'm sure he has spoken to me and i'm sure he has spoken to someone he has spoken to you today continue to seek his will in your life not just uh, to to please people not just to accept uh, the will of men but the will of god in the name of god the father the son and the holy spirit